sat atop the dinosaur pyramid like a sovereign on a throne. His name? Ceratosaurus. For 20 million years, he was the unchallenged super predator. But now, new science suggests this monster fought his own battle royale against an interloper more than twice his size. Now, the hunter becomes the hunted. They're the Earth's first fighters, the ultimate predators. New discoveries in forensic science bring to life the prehistoric art of war. This is Jurassic Fight Club. The story begins in a quarry, just outside what is now Canyon City, Colorado. A local farmer is tending to his land when he suddenly sees strange bones jutting up from the soil. He has no idea he's uncovered one of the most stunning finds in dinosaur history. The quarry held the remains of 10 different species of dinosaurs. Nearly all were from plant eaters. But there was something highly unusual here. The skeletons had been ripped apart and most of the bones were missing. Paleontologists also noted that many of the bones showed unusual gash marks and puncture wounds. What force could have ripped apart so many skeletons? Were scientists looking at a prehistoric mass murder? The discovery of the site near Canyon City was really interesting because so many different species of dinosaurs were all found together. But what makes the site really weird is that the majority of the skeletons that were found, only the neck and the skull were there. And in other cases, only the tails and a few random bones. In the hunt for dinosaurs, finding complete skeletons is rare. Paleontologist Dr. Larry Martin of the University of Kansas explains why. The reason that we don't find more complete skeletons is uh, exactly the reason why you don't get rich every time you go into a casino. The odds are against you. Its body and its skin begin to rot and fall off, and eventually the bones are torn apart by scavengers, maybe taken someplace else and eaten, or they get separated and, and washed into different areas. Everything that happens to an animal after it dies destroys information. And that's the reason why, in the end, so little is left. But think of the luck that we have to have simply to find it. Investigators began to study the evidence to try and understand what caused the gash and puncture wounds in the bones. What does the scratches on the leg bone of a dinosaur mean? Are they tooth marks? Are they claw marks? That is the first question. But once we look closer, we start to understand maybe what a tooth mark looks like. There's a certain characteristic to it. Then the question becomes, how can we figure out who made that tooth mark? Obviously, we need to know who are the potential perpetrators? Who else is living in the environment? Who is it potentially available to, if you will, commit this crime? Then, a clue. Mixed among the various herbivores' bones was a nearly complete skeleton of a monstrous-looking predator, Ceratosaurus. He stood 13 feet tall and 20 feet long. Compared to later dinosaurs, such as Tyrannosaurus rex, his size was smaller. But one feature sets this meat-eater apart from all others a nose horn. The name Ceratosaurus means horned lizard. It was the first dinosaur found that had a horn on its nose. Uh, it wasn't a cone-shaped horn or anything. It was actually a sort of a flat blade shape. They're not for a combat at all. And if we were to look at the modern world for an equivalent, we might look at something like the crest on the top of the head of a rooster.
Along with its unique skull design, Ceratosaurus had another feature that distinguished it from other predators. Four fingers on each hand. One thing that's unusual when we look at, at Ceratosaurus is that it's got seemingly extra fingers compared to other, other of these predatory dinosaurs, which usually have basically three fingers on, on each hand. Ceratosaurus has a fourth. One of the things that tells us is that it's actually a more primitive dinosaur. Now, the third and fourth fingers are very small, probably not very functionally effective. The hand of Ceratosaurus having shorter fingers, even though it had four fingers, was definitely not as good for slashing prey. Ceratosaurus is a very deep skull with, for its size, extremely big teeth. So this guy was focusing on the head as its weapon, not its claws. During the Jurassic period, over 150 million years ago, Ceratosaurus stood out as an apex predator. But the Rocky Mountain region of America, where it lived, would be unrecognizable to us today. Back during the late Jurassic, in what's now the Rocky Mountain region, the entire landscape was essentially flat. Rivers were pretty much flowing across the floodplain from west to east. The entire floodplain was probably scattered with these rivers, with ponds and lakes and large meadows. In between the rivers, it might have been a little bit drier. And we know that this aridity may have caused animals to locate themselves more closely along the rivers and along the belts of vegetation that surrounded the rivers. Ceratosaurus was perfectly designed for hunting in the densely forested areas that surrounded the river systems. And we now know that when it attacked, it used one very effective weapon its blade-like teeth. When you look at the skull of a Ceratosaurus, you'll notice that they have two different tooth designs. The teeth in the lower jaw are very typical of predatory dinosaurs, come to a pretty sharp edge and pretty devastating. But the upper teeth are immensely long. You talk about an overbite. This guy's upper teeth are incredibly long, and those teeth are shaped exactly like the blade of a knife, and they're serrated. Those teeth did some dirty work. These teeth would have certainly ripped through any flesh. And one of the problems with the teeth, though, is they certainly are not as strong as other teeth of theropod dinosaurs laterally. So a ceratosaurus maybe could not have grabbed a large animal with its mouth and then shook the prey within its mouth. Their teeth were razor sharp, but paleontologists discovered something intriguing. They were not designed to cut bone, and its less than powerful hand claws did not appear capable of slashing bone. So could Ceratosaurus have been responsible for the deep gash marks found on the bones from the site? Experts say no. Ceratosaurus, although a pretty nasty predator, was not really suited for taking on adult-sized stegosaurs or those long-necked sauropods found at the site. Certainly, it could scavenge off of the bodies if they were already dead, but most of the teeth marks in the bones were much wider than the teeth of Ceratosaurus, and they went much deeper into the bones than I think a Ceratosaurus could have bitten. So there's no way Ceratosaurus was a predator that left the majority of these teeth marks. Ceratosaurus may not have been capable of biting through bone, but there is no doubt it was a successful predator that killed at will. Its remains have been found around the world, which is unusual. This prehistoric monster literally dominated the Earth. We know it lived in Western North America, but recent discoveries have shown it also lived in Europe, in Portugal and Spain. Close relatives of it lived in South America, and there's even traces that it might have lived in Africa, so it's sort of a wide-ranging dinosaur. Ceratosaurus may be found in locations throughout the world, but it is still a very rare dinosaur to find. Trying to decipher what had happened here, paleontologists had to consider the question, did these dinosaurs hunt in packs? There's no real evidence yet that it lived together in groups. 
But those horns tell us something. Those horns, they're not for attack, they're for display. And if you're gonna have a display structure, that means at least on occasion, you get together and you show off to each other, say, look at me, I've got the biggest horn. So at least some of the time, these guys got together in groups. When you look at the moderate size of Ceratosaurus, and then you compare that to the enormous sizes of the herbivores that lived with it, I can only draw one conclusion, and that is these predators needed to hunt cooperatively in groups. There's just no way they could take down large herbivores by themselves. The fact that so few have been found makes it hard to say with certainty that they hunted in groups, but I have no problem believing that they did, simply from a survival standpoint. Then the mystery deepened. CAT scans were conducted on the skull of Ceratosaurus. The results were intriguing. We now know that Ceratosaurus may have been an ambush predator. Hunting in pairs would allow this meat eater to take on bigger game, or set up an ambush to capture smaller, fast-moving prey. When we look at the brain structure and recognize that the optic centers of the brain are relatively modest in Ceratosaurus, suggests that vision was probably fairly important for this animal, but was not the key part of its prey capture behavior. What we could suggest then is that Ceratosaurus probably was an ambush predator. Ceratosaurus is not really a one-on-one -on -one confrontational dinosaur. It would rely on ambush. It would either lie in wait, or if it was hunting with a mate, the mate would drive the prey to the hidden dinosaur. In fact, the size of its brain cavity shows this dinosaur wasn't the most intelligent in the prehistoric world. Well, when you look at the size of the brain and the brain cavity of Ceratosaurus and compare it to its body size, we see that the, the brain is really quite a modest organ in, in this animal. This was not a particularly clever animal. This was an animal that was relatively simple by our standards. It was sort of an earlier model meat eater there and doesn't have the more sophisticated brain that we see in some of its contemporaries. So although it was pretty strong, it didn't have the claws, it didn't have the brains, and it also didn't have the size of some of the other giant meat eaters of its environment. The identity of one of those giant meat eaters was about to be revealed. There, only 20 yards from the spot where they found the Ceratosaurus, scientists uncovered another skeleton. But this one was one of the most terrifying predators of the Jurassic, one that only deepened the mystery and made Ceratosaurus look like a lightweight. At this prehistoric feeding ground, multiple plant-eating species are found. And next to them are not one, but two meat-eaters. One is Ceratosaurus, a medium-sized predator with an unusual skull design. But the other is more than twice its size. It was the terror of the Jurassic. Allosaurus. It was, without a doubt, one of the most terrifying dinosaurs of the late Jurassic. Tyrannosaurus rex may have ruled the Cretaceous, but Allosaurus was the king of the Jurassic. Well, in any environment uh, that we have on Earth today, we have a top predator. Allosaurus was the top predator of the late Jurassic of Western North America. Here in Alaska, you've got the brown bear, up in Arctic Alaska, polar bear, Africa, Serengeti, a lion. Uh, if you're in India, the tiger. And in Western North America, it's Allosaurus. It had powerful jaws with pretty sharp teeth. It had extremely large claws on its hand, which were very useful for gripping and tearing. For nearly 20 million years, Ceratosaurus had dominated the region of North America where the Rocky Mountain states are now. But the emergence of Allosaurus, a bigger, faster, stronger adversary, changed everything. What made the Allosaurus unique 
was how much more powerfully built it was than the other predators of the late Jurassic era, including Ceratosaurus, which it dwarfed. Allosaurus was one of the largest predatory dinosaurs in North America at the end of the Jurassic. He ultimately displaces Ceratosaurus as being the apex predator. If you were face to face with an Allosaurus, first of all, you'd be in big trouble. Because the first thing, you turn around to run, by the time you did, it had a foot planted on you, planting you face first into the mud, and would reach down, grab on, brace itself, and basically chop you in half with a bite force probably comparable to a great white shark. Allosaurus represented a considerable upgrade from the Ceratosaurus. In fact, its size was unprecedented for its time. Measuring 35 feet long, 15 feet tall, and weighing up to five tons, Allosaurus was the size of a railroad boxcar. When the first big skeletons of Allosaurus were uncovered, people finally saw that there were meat-eating dinosaurs that were as big as a killer whale, with powerful claws on its hand, truly a terror from the Jurassic period. One social characteristic made Allosaurus even more dangerous. Ongoing research suggests these behemoths lived in packs. This was typical of plant eaters, but less commonly seen in predators before this time. What's interesting that with Allosaurus, we find large accumulations of Allosaurus bone. That's unusual, because we tend not to find that with predatory animals of any kind, not just dinosaur. And so when we see large accumulations, it makes us wonder what's going on. Did these animals live in large groups? We might even call them flocks, considering they're closely related to birds. Family groups are very effective for predators, because hunting on your own, your chances of success are limited. They're up against some pretty tough critters back then. Some of the things they preyed on could have killed them very easily. So by living in a family group and hunting in a family group, it ensures your chances of survival. And there's another key difference between these dinosaurs. The Allosaurus was an intelligent creature with a capacity to form strategies. We were very interested to have the opportunity to CAT scan the skull of Allosaurus, because in terms of its, its position in the family tree of predatory dinosaurs, it was kind of right in the middle. It wasn't like the more primitive dinosaurs, like Majungatholus, and it wasn't like the really sort of very bird-like dinosaurs, like, like Deinonychus. Well, Allosaurus was the most sophisticated of the late Jurassic animals. Among the large meat-eating animals, it probably had the most sophisticated uh, mental capacities. No genius by any means, but smarter probably than any other large predator within its uh, environment. You know, this always would give it an advantage over these other predatory dinosaurs. The sensors were probably a bit more acute, and the way their mind would process the sensory information uh, probably is more efficient. During the Jurassic period, Allosaurus was the most sophisticated predator in North America. But along with its intellect, it had three incredible weapons. The first was a jagged array of serrated teeth rooted in jaws that could crush steel. Its teeth were very powerful and very robust and serrated on each side. He's got massive jaw muscles. He's designed for cracking through bone. If it took a bite, it would probably jerk its head back and shake its prey and try to rip out a big chunk of flesh. It would probably quickly weaken and, and bleed to death anything that got a bite on. The bites on these animals are really very powerful, and they not only simply can bite out a big chunk of meat, but they can crush and swallow whole bones. They were eating some of the biggest animals the Earth has ever seen. Allosaurus was feeding on sauropods, animals that are multi-times the size of our largest mammals today, the elephant. And they were bringing these animals down. 
Unlike humans, who get two sets of teeth in a lifetime, Allosaurus constantly replenished their supply, growing new ones when old ones were ripped out during a kill. It's just really amazing to imagine the, the power involved in, in biting into a bone that's as big around as a, a medium-sized tree trunk and leaving your tooth embedded in there. And, and of course, once uh, you know the tooth is lost, Allosaurus can simply regrow them. Second in Allosaurus's arsenal was its hand claws, a deadly three-pronged rake that ripped through thick hide and literally tore the flesh out of a combatant. The hand claws would have been like an eagle on steroids. They're long, they're curved, they're actually very similar to eagle claws in shape, but backed by huge muscles. Allosaurus, among the meat-eating dinosaurs, had the biggest claws of any of the animals. This is a replica of the claw. And if we look at this, this is the ungual. This is the actual bone that's under the claw. As you can see, it would be much like a bear claw, a couple of carinae here, very effective in ripping, puncturing, and grasping its prey. The hands of Allosaurus are really impressive. When you look at the hand claws, you notice that they're rounded underneath. They're, they're not sharp at all, which would tend to indicate that these hands are used for grabbing, puncturing, grabbing, and, and holding on to, to prey animals versus, say, an animal like Utahraptor that tended to have a, a sharp blade on the underneath side of the claw, which may have been used to, to cut and slash. Allosaurus relied on speed for catching prey. That was its third weapon. In 2007, paleontologists at England's Manchester University made a breakthrough revelation. By studying the leg, musculature, and mechanics behind them, they were able to peg Allosaurus's top speed at 21 miles per hour. Fast for a large predator. Allosaurus is built for high-speed locomotion. The animal could propel himself along fairly efficiently. Very good lever system for moving itself. Powerful leg muscles pulling back to power him along. Fast, powerful, and equipped with deadly weapons, Allosaurus was the ultimate predator of the Jurassic. But was this the dinosaur responsible for the gash marks on the bones found at the Colorado site? When you look at a lot of the bones in Jurassic quarries of this age, you, you really see some amazing uh, gouge and bite marks. Uh, some of these uh, gouge marks on the bones get, you know, close to an inch wide and almost as deep. And, and these are all caused by Allosaurus, who or no doubt uh, eating these carcasses. Just really amazing to, to kind of imagine the power and the size of the animals that, that could leave these, these gouges and these large, large bones. The bite marks on the bones found at the Colorado Quarry were the same size and shape as the teeth of Allosaurus. And the deep gashes in them were similar to the shape of the claws of this dinosaur as well. And since the skeleton of an Allosaurus was found in the quarry, there was little doubt that this dinosaur was responsible for those bone injuries. It was a vital piece of the puzzle. This was an Allosaurus killing ground. But one important question remained. Why had at least one Ceratosaurus encroached in its territory? Can experts reconstruct what could have happened here? We have a number of fossil sites that proves that Allosaurus and Ceratosaurus shared the same environment. The most famous is the Cleveland Lloyd Quarry in Utah, where the skeleton of a Ceratosaurus was found mixed among those of Allosaurus. So I have no doubt that these two predators came in contact with each other and competed for the same resources. I don't think Allosaurus played well with others, and so it makes sense to me that it would attempt to kill any competitor in its territory. And so that may be what happened to the Ceratosaurus found in the Colorado Quarry. These animals lived in the same environment at the same time and potentially would have been competitors. One way to decrease competition is for each of them to actually take or specialize in different prey. 
But when prey was scarce, dividing up the food was not an option for either of these dinosaurs. The prehistoric killing field found in Colorado proved that two major predators came face to face at the Allosaurus feeding ground. And when Allosaurus and Ceratosaurus fought, the Jurassic world would be turned upside down when the hunter became the hunted. Two of the largest predators in North America are on a collision course of destruction. The scene is the 150 million year old feeding ground of an Allosaurus. Investigators began to follow a new theory, where an interloper, another carnivore, made his move. In November 2007, experts were asked to help size up these two super predators. When we look at Allosaurus and Ceratosaurus, we're looking at fundamentally two different animals. They have different ancestries. Uh, the Ceratosaurus comes from a, a group of dinosaurs that's much more ancient. The Allosaur, on the other hand, is a group of dinosaurs that uh, appeared later in time and uh, has a slightly better body build. Allosaurus, on average, seems to be a little bit uh, more heavily built than what we see in, in most of the Ceratosaurus specimens. Um, and so, in a sense, uh, Allosaurus is, is a sturdier kind of animal. Ceratosaurus wasn't a massive creature, but it certainly was an effective predator. We can look at modern jaguars to see animals that sort of played the same role that Ceratosaurus does. Jaguars take on medium to smaller prey, but it's hesitant to attack really big things. Now compare that to Allosaurus, who's much heavier and more powerful. If Ceratosaurus was the jaguar of the Jurassic, then Allosaurus was the tiger. Like modern tigers, Allosaurus was the ultimate predator of its domain. It could take on anything it wanted. The life of a predator rests on its ability to capture prey. But with less mass to carry, Ceratosaurus may have been more agile. In a foot race, Ceratosaurus would probably win. Agility-wise, because it is a, lar a smaller body mass, or basically their body forms are very similar. Uh, but Ceratosaurus, because it's going to be a little bit smaller, it'll probably be a bit more agile than Allosaurus. Because Ceratosaurus is not as robust as Allosaurus, he's a little bit quicker and certainly more agile. So even though Allosaurus is a fast dinosaur, he's not nearly as quick as Ceratosaurus. That massive tail of Allosaurus also gave it an advantage when it came to speed and agility. Allosaurus is a slightly more advanced, slightly more specialized meat eater. Its tail is a little more adapted for agility. It has more of a tapering to the tail, not a deep tail, and therefore it can use it as a counterbalance better in order to turn quickly. What's interesting is that when we actually look inside the head, we see an inner ear structure that suggests that these kind of quick movements are more important for Allosaurus than for Ceratosaurus. But to offset its smaller size and less powerful body, Ceratosaurus relied on a special adaptation for survival. It hunted in pairs. It wouldn't be unusual for predators like Ceratosaurus to hunt in pairs. Smaller predators are much more effective when they hunt in groups, and we see that in members of the raptor family. They offset their small sizes by working in a group to take on much larger prey. Now, these dinosaurs were much larger than raptors, so chances are they would not hunt in the really large groups, but since they're related to birds, then it would make sense that they would probably hunt with a mate. Being faster and more agile than your prey was an important attribute. But the ability to ambush prey was a much more lethal hunting strategy. Predators today will seek out and hide along game trails, 
Those are trails that herbivores use to get to and from food and water. Well, dinosaurs like Allosaurus and Ceratosaurus would have also used these trails to their advantage. They could find a grove of trees and use them for cover as they wait for the prey to walk down the trail, or they could work as a team to drive prey along a trail towards the awaiting mate. Game trails are like road maps to the dinner table as far as predators are concerned. The Jurassic era is rife with unexpected events. Even when they aren't as momentous as a climate change or a tectonic shift, small factors played havoc with the outcome of a violent challenge. Scientists now know that their body structures meant that they actually preyed on different dinosaurs. Certainly, their different structures suggest different killing styles. Allosaurus may have actually concentrated on, on maybe larger prey. Ceratosaurus with its longer teeth, somewhat more delicate, gracile build, suggests that it might have actually been feeding on somewhat smaller prey. Look at animal designs today, and you'll find that most predators are specialized in what they hunt. Although they'll take advantage of any food source they come across, they're really suited for only certain types of prey. It's not a coincidence that you find cheetahs living alongside gazelles. The same goes with lions and wildebeest. Each predator is ideally suited to capture and kill their particular prey. And so we can apply that same behavior and hunting methods to prehistoric predators. But would a Ceratosaurus attack a larger, more powerful adversary like Allosaurus? Investigators would look towards modern animals for the answer. Would a Ceratosaurus take on an Allosaurus? Well, yes, depending on the circumstances. If Ceratosaurus was protecting a kill or defending a territory, then I believe they would certainly at least stand their ground against Allosaurus. If they outnumbered the Allosaurus, then I have no doubt they would stand and fight. But recreating what would have actually happened is difficult because so few clues can be found. The bones tell us things like how big the animal was, whether it ate plants or meat, if it was fast or slow, but they don't tell us everything that actually happened. So when we recreate what may have happened, we do our very best to ensure that there's a basis for reality. We use as much science as possible, and we rely on our understanding of modern animal behaviors so that what you see is a realistic depiction. Using evidence found at the site and their understanding of modern animal behavior, experts dissect a lethal battle when one predator ventured into the killing field of another larger predator and went from hunter to prey. A battle between two of the most deadly predators in North America is about to take place. Only one will live to see another day. The other is destined to die. Using teamwork, a pair of ceratosauruses are hunting for food. They're in unfamiliar territory. Unknowingly, they've wandered into the domain of the most dangerous dinosaur of the Jurassic. Allosaurus. Dinosaurs like Allosaurus and Tyrannosaurus rex would have marked the boundaries of their territory with scent marks like modern predators do. These scent marks were a clear warning to intruders that they were not welcome. Drawn into the Allosaurus's territory by the promise of prey and prime hunting grounds, the Ceratosaurus continue their hunt. One of the favorite hunting methods of Ceratosaurus is the hide-and-seek method. She'll hide in a dense grove of trees along a game trail, standing motionless. Only thing moving on her are going to be her eyes. She doesn't want to give away her position. While one moves off to circle behind its potential prey, the other takes advantage of its surroundings and uses it to conceal her body. 
location is perfect for an ambush. We see the same sort of behavior in modern lions, where the male will simply act as a distraction to drive prey towards the awaiting female. It's a great way to ambush prey while limiting the potential harm to the ceratosaurus. And they know that the prey is going to take the easiest route of escape, and that's going to be on that game trail. Once the male knows that the prey has gotten on the game trail, the chase ensues. The ceratosaurus is trying to make as much noise as he can. He's trying to drive the prey into the waiting arms of his hidden mate. Anticipating the approaching prey being driven towards her by her mate, the female prepares to spring their trap. But unknown to her, she herself is being hunted. She has no idea that while she's laying in ambush for this prey, she herself is being preyed upon. A 35-foot-long, four-ton Allosaurus is within striking distance. He slowly begins to move up behind her, trying to be as quiet as he can. With his heavily padded feet, the four-ton Allosaurus is able to approach within striking distance of the unwary Ceratosaurus. The foot of Allosaurus is perfectly designed to muffle the sound of its approach if it needed to be quiet. Oblivious to the female's peril, the male Ceratosaurus continues the quest for his quarry. The female senses something is behind her, but it's too late. Before she has time to turn her head, the Allosaurus unleashes a one-ton crush of teeth. All she sees is the wide open mouth of the Allosaurus, who crushes her by the neck, snapping the bones as if they were twigs. Her neck is broken, she's completely lifeless, and slumps to the ground. The attack is so swift, the male Ceratosaurus has no idea the sweep will not play out as it always has. Now the Allosaurus can turn his attention to the male, who is rushing in, thinking the female will jump out at any moment. He knows where the ambush spot is. He stops because he doesn't see her. An unfamiliar roar rips through the forest. The male stops his charge, adopting a slower pace and a more defensive posture. He sniffs the air and smells the spilled blood. He senses something's wrong, but has no idea what. He catches slight movement. As he turns and looks, he sees the silhouette of a massive Allosaurus that is now closing in. It's a David and Goliath matchup. The Allosaurus is much larger and more powerful than the Ceratosaurus. The Allosaurus's jaws snap shut within inches of the Ceratosaurus, but he's safe. The Allosaurus turns his body, and the Ceratosaurus lines up to try to figure out where the mate is. The male can only assume she's run off, or worse, the Allosaurus has killed her. The Ceratosaurus is lighter and more nimble. He knows that in this dense forest, he can maneuver a lot quicker. Using trees as defense, he ducks in and out, trying to get in close enough to attack the Allosaurus. The Allosaurus stands its ground and simply leans that monstrous body forward, snapping that mouth every time the Ceratosaurus steps from behind a tree. Ceratosaurus looks at his attacker and recognizes the two most vulnerable spots. He realizes that if he can outflank the Allosaurus and jump on its side, the Allosaurus has no defense. He'll be able to leap onto his side and rip him open. His long, stiffened tail is designed like a balancing pole. He can leap onto the side of that Allosaurus and use that tail to balance while he's up there. It would be like the world's first rodeo rider, only this rodeo ends in death. Alone and outclassed, a single Ceratosaurus attempts the impossible. With speed as his only advantage, he is trapped in a do-or-die battle to the death with Allosaurus, the terror of the Jurassic world.
What started as a simple quest for food has turned into a disaster for a pair of ceratosauruses. They've entered the territory of a huge allosaurus who ambushed the female. Now she lies in a pool of blood, and her mate is in a fight to the death with a lumbering allosaurus twice his size. Allosaurus is so big, all he cares about is getting his teeth on you. Once he's got you, you're done. Game over. The claw drives home directly into the Allosaurus. The Allosaurus roars in terror as it stands upright, blood gushing from the wound. Now the fight has changed. It's personal. The Ceratosaurus now has the perfect opportunity to outflank the Allosaurus. Ceratosaurus moves quickly around and leaps into the air, landing on the side of the Allosaurus. The Allosaurus is looking to kill this animal, not chase him away, but to kill him. Allosaurus, using his mass, is able to shift and shudder and ultimately throw the Ceratosaurus to the ground. Allosaurus lunges forward, but then changes position halfway to his target. The Ceratosaurus fails to react quickly enough. The enormous jaws of the Allosaurus clamp down on the shoulder of the Ceratosaurus. The Ceratosaur roars in pain and is able to use its elongated upper teeth to slash the jaw of the Allosaur. The Allosaur will not release its prey. Fueled by bloodlust, the Allosaurus unleashes his rage on the wounded rival. Grabbing the Ceratosaurus in his jaws, the Allosaurus picks his body up and shakes it like a rag doll. The Ceratosaurus slumps to the ground, and the Allosaurus towers over its prey. Allosaurus uses the enormous claws on its feet to disembowel its helpless prey. Allosaurus has won the battle and has reclaimed this forest as its own. Over the next 20 million years, Allosaurus dethroned Ceratosaurus as the most lethal creature on planet Earth. But as powerful as it was, it was no match against Mother Nature. The end of the Jurassic brought an end to the reign of Allosaurus. Reason Ceratosaurus vanished in North America, Allosaurus vanished, is a real mystery. And someday we may find that one spot where that skiff of dirt was preserved that shows what happened in that 20 million year gap. For now, we don't have it. Theories may vary in explaining what happened to the great predators of the Jurassic epoch. But one thing is indisputable. No matter how mighty the creature, Planet Earth itself will always have the last word. Big animals like Allosaurus and Ceratosaurus are the first to suffer during a dramatic climactic change. Because of their sheer size, they require a certain amount of food and a certain amount of water. When the environment changed in the late Jurassic about 120 million years ago, it really caused problems for the bigger animals. It was a struggle for dominion that rocked this very ground so many million years ago, when a new world order was established, and the hunter became the hunted.